This is one of just a handful of motor-driven electrostatic machines that I've built. Although their hand-cranked cousins are arguably more novel in a modern setting, motor-driven electrostatic generators can be more practical for specialized use. They are immune to the kind of damage that affects normal solid-state power supplies and rectifiers, such as errors in load circuitry, short circuits, and voltage spikes. In essence, they are effectively bulletproof. They can be used for any application requiring low current and extremely high voltage. The vertical upright supports are made by combining wooden paint stir sticks. The output terminals are made from aluminum rods and lamp finials. The pulleys are completely homemade using wooden paneling. The top bosses are made using fender washers, string, and JB Weld. The two vertical driving cords for the two discs are made from ordinary string. The neutralizer brushes are fine strands of wire pinched between nuts threaded onto bolts. There are 32 sectors per disc. The sectors are made using adhesive aluminum tape. The top axle is an ordinary 1 4th inch diameter bolt. Everything along the top axle is separated by metal washers. To reduce noise and wear, Plastic or nylon washers are used to separate the two clear acrylic discs. The two opposing output arms are supported and separated by a single acrylic bar. The mechanical system is powered by a 12 volt DC electric motor. Electric power for the motor is supplied by an ordinary computer ATX power supply. The output arms are curved sections of 1 4th inch diameter aluminum rods. The curved sections are joined by wooden balls. The actual charge collectors are made using aluminum adhesive tape. The machine is really not that hard to build. It lends itself to creativity and construction is greatly simplified if the builder can improvise when necessary or convenient. It's possible to invest time, money, and skill building something that doesn't work well. There are very simple yet elusive details that can make the difference between sparks that are only a few millimeters long and those that literally look like small lightning bolts. Thus, by taking these very simple measures into consideration, it's possible to get spark lengths that actually approach the radius of the two discs. Stay tuned to my channel for upcoming videos. I plan to cover tips and techniques that will enable my viewers to build machines at minimal cost using some of the most common supplies imaginable to obtain truly spectacular results. Don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up if you like this video.